Are you all keen diddlers or keen green ELTers? A bit of both or more green, more doodly? What? I'm I'm greener than doodly, I have to say. I do doodle. Um, I'd certainly doodle a lot more since I met Udle. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's something I do a bit more now, that's for sure. And your daughter does a lot of uh, doodling. She does. My daughter's a doodler. Yeah, and she actually inspired me to change the way I draw notebooks. Did, so, did she inspire you or did she inspiral you? Oh, she inspiraled me, yes. So now, instead of little C shapes along the side, remind me when I'm drawing to show you. Um, I now do Ali's spiral. So, there you go. I, I told her the other day she was quite delighted, I have to admit. Yeah. She was good. quite delighted. Well, she should be. <laughs> Change making. There you go. Change, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Cool. Okay. Well, keep writing in the chat as we go through. And we've got lots of cool ideas for you. Um, one of the things that I was drawn to Harry because he once said in a teacher training session, can't remember when it was, podcast perhaps, that um, teacher trainers, their purpose is to give ideas to teachers and then teachers go away and make them better and improve them. So yeah. I've got a lot of ideas for Harry that I would like him to improve, but I'd also like you to improve it in the chat. And if you're watching the recording on YouTube, please add it in the comments, any ideas that you have. So shall we get started? Let's do it, let's go. I've got my cool. water here ready to go. So, you know, I can talk away and, and I'll be fine in my Great. Harry Potter cup. Oh, magic. Uh, so this is one of my very first sketch notes, and it was of probably the very first session I attended of Harry's. Um, when I look at it now, I think, wow, there's a lot of, the space is all a bit, there's, um, yeah, it's a bit squashed at the bottom. But you know what? It got the point across, and it's doodles, and it was fun, and it helped me to focus. And I look at it all the time, and I remember everything that I've written because I've got that visual cue, but also because I look at it more frequently. Whereas before I started sketchnoting, I didn't, I just, I would have the pages of notes that were just words and they would just go into a dusty cupboard and never be looked at ever again. But yeah. now they're much more visually appealing and I look at them all the time. But well, yeah. Exactly that. When I look at this, I mean, obviously when you did it, I, I wanted to cry with excitement. Um, it's, it's amazing. But that that idea of of sketch noting does just make it so much easier to quickly look at rather than my handwriting's not great, I'll be honest. But I've got notebooks and notebooks filled with ideas from various sessions that I've been to that it helps that I wrote it down because it stuck it in my brain, but I can guarantee I have never looked back at it ever again. Yeah. Whereas I've seen this about 500 times <laughs> and I keep thinking this is amazing um I, i've never the looked picture like of you just looks like you so much exactly I, I i do look like an angry tin man like that is me <laughs> to a t when i look in the mirror in the morning i think yes angry tin man but I, I love it and what i love about this when you showed me again the other day was that these ideas these haven't changed um, and i talked about this in a post that i wrote today because I, I did a training session yesterday and as as teacher trainers, we do, we always have to come up with new ideas and this is new and follow the trends and where should I fit chat GPT into my talk? Because that's what everyone's talking about. And we kind of just step away from the things that we've done in the past. Now, this was what, two years ago, two-ish? And Yeah, 2021, I think. Yeah, and I look at it now and I still think that's relevant. That's still relevant. I still talk about that. I still do that in my classes. So it's so important to be able to look back and see what maybe you have changed, but also what has stayed the same. Yeah. Yeah. So you would still tell people to get a plant for their class. I still do. I literally did this time last week. I did exactly that. Yeah. And get plants for your background. Or, or your foreground. Or your foreground so that you enjoy it more than the people that are watching you. Exactly. There you go. Um, getting outside is really important as well. Yeah. As a lover of the outdoors, I know yeah. this. And yeah, just getting the students outside from a perspective, not only of being green, but of seeing the city that they're in. 
But yeah. my students, I live, I live in Scotland, I teach in Scotland, and my students have come over. Some of them don't know the city particularly well. But actually, I remember taking them to a park, Pollock Park, a few years ago. And it's one of these quite wild parks. It's not really, it's not a beautiful flower garden type park. And um, one of the students said, but teacher, does nobody actually look after this place? And yeah, I love that because they're so used to well manicured parks. Pristine and, parks, yeah. Yeah, this one was all natural. Yeah. And litter picks, you've done quite a lot of litter picks with your students. I always tell my students to look up wherever they are, whatever they're doing. Oh, have I frozen? No. You, you froze for a tiny second, but you're back. Ah, there we go. Yeah, I always tell my students to look up. That's uh, an important thing. When they're going along to look up, you know, it, be it at day, be it at night, just always make sure you look up. Yeah. And One of my what, what about praising green behaviour? Uh, yeah, I actually call it, now I say, celebrate sustainable behaviour. But, uh -huh. you know... <laughs> um, but that, again, is still an absolute key to, to the talk. So I was talking about global citizenship education the other day um, and, you know, normalising these behaviours. So stuff like turning off the lights and doing it in your classrooms. But when you see your students doing it, make sure they, they continue to do so. But, yeah, those, those five points, they're, they're probably they're staple to all of my talks still. And I've, I've you know, I've done many different talks about greeniness um but they are still very much the the key fundamental the core values exactly yeah cool and the lane green teaching machine would you be would you say that's more kind of change makery or the yeah it's it's gone more it's gone more away from the teacher to the student now okay so it's it's not necessarily about you being really green and you being great for your students it's about you helping your students harness their change maker within rather than you know it, it it's more student-centered now it's not as harry focused okay i love that okay um yeah so actually it's quite interesting seeing how you've developed in the last two years and how things have changed for you since this sketch note has been created as well how my sketch noting skills have been have developed because this was probably my first or second ever sketch note. So if anybody's watching this and they're wanting to sketch note it, just feel the fear and draw it anyway. Just do it. Don't be don't be exactly. afraid. And if you can make me look like a, an angry tin man, even better. Yeah, and I, yeah, I'd like to. I don't know what I'd like to look like. I don't know someone with a bit of greenery growing out of my head. <laughs> But well, you can see here in the, the one when we we met at IATEFL, what a yep. wonderful time that was last year. Like, still there in the top tips. It's got the get yeah. a class plant, you know, create a love of nature. Um, obviously, it was more about, there were more about barriers in this one and, you know, how to overcome these barriers and how you can get past it. But, you know, the, the central ideas are still those very simple ideas of, of getting a class plant and, and getting out into nature when you can and... They're, they're still but you can see there that was what a, a year later basically and it's yeah it's some well, very simple things ideas. on like upcycling and imagining the future yeah and that that idea there of developed passion I think that's the thing that's that's probably the most important thing when it comes to change making anyway and when it comes to the way I try and help Mm -hmm. students become change makers no, no matter what the age it is that develop the passion so you can't force environmentalism on anybody you know you can't force somebody to want to not I don't know buy single-use plastic it has to be something that they're passionate about so finding that passion and harnessing that passion is so important um otherwise well otherwise they're just not going to listen to you they'll they'll have a they'll have a fun half an hour hour in class with you jumping around like a clown getting red-faced and angry about things but then yes. they'll leave the classroom and they'll just go on if they aren't connected to it, if they haven't developed that passion then like what's the point yeah it's gonna put them off isn't it getting angry about it yeah so when it comes to this imagine a future thing is that would you go for imagining a negative future or a positive future 
I'd like I like my students to imagine a realistic future. I went to a, a really, 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 really good um, session with Kids Against Plastic, and it was all about imagine the future in ten years. You know, but what they did first. So this was with uh, about thirty, you know, uh, three to fifteen year olds, and they got them to talk about their their ideas of their ideal school, their perfect school but it had to be, still be realistic. And it was talking about, you know, if we can make these changes, how will the school be in 10 years time? So imagining that, you know, if you do make these changes, what would happen? And it's not, you know, if we stop fossil fuels today, in 10 years time, the world is gonna be amazing. You know, yeah. it's not about that because we need to be realistic, you know, but in that realism, so we talk, I don't know, I like to talk about, local waterways and stuff like that and imagine if we clean up the waterway and imagine if we stop dumping chemicals in the waterway how will it look maybe there'll be fish in it again you know you probably won't be able to swim in it but there might be fish in there again or you know it, it was that yeah. whole thing of do you remember during the pandemic when everything stopped and suddenly there were like animals walking around cities and it's like yeah yeah well, dolphins and spinners Exactly. We can see we can see this future because it, it's a possible future. All we did was stop for a month then as well. Yeah. So, you know, that was stop doing stop being horrible, over consuming humans for a month. And there's boars walking the streets of Barcelona. Right? There's yeah. there are dolphins in Venice. So you know, we have these snapshots of what the future could be like. Um, and it, it is a positive future I like to, to look at. But. We also need to be realistic and, and look at the possibilities of what our future might be if we do just continue consuming and consuming and consuming. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. And what about this inspire change makers? Well, this is basically that's basically my my thing now. Um, that's what I, I try and do again. I it's the usually world changer, focused. inspiring other world changers. Well, hopefully. Um, it's this idea of once they've found their passion, uh, they can they can make that change. They can go out there and and make a difference. And this for me is is fundamental as a teacher. It's so important. We're not just we're not just English teachers. We're not there to only teach English. We're there to help form our students to become better humans. And yeah, you know what better than help them find their voice and like and speak up and and try and make a difference. So. This idea of you know cultivating change makers is, is something we're working on in series three of Renewable English, um, where we're going to look at different aspects of change making. Um, and we're going to you know look at how we can harness that passion and and help our students, because not all of our students are going to become change makers. It's not going to happen. But if you can get 10 percent of your students that go out there to become change makers, it's much more than zero percent. Yes. Yeah. And I guess giving them the confidence to be a change maker in a green sense gives them the confidence to be a green uh, a change maker in other senses. Exactly. Well, exactly. And, using their voice in other ways. And that's it. And it, it's such a simple thing, like a very small thing. And I, I like to talk about a situation that happened here in the village. And that was talking to the kids at, at my daughter's school and telling them, you know, we don't need plastic bags. They're like, that's a good point. You know, we've all got tote bags. We've got rucksacks for school and stuff. So when we go to the supermarket, let's use that. Um, but then we took it a step further and I said, why don't you use your voice in Spanish in this case, speak to the, the people that work at the cash desk. And when they say, do you want a bag? Don't just say, no, thank you. I've got my own, but say, no, thank you. But you don't need to offer everybody a bag. So next time when somebody comes up, just don't offer them a bag. Let them ask for a bag themselves. Yeah. You know, I started off by suggesting this to a few people. And then I told, well, I talked to the students at school and I said, why don't you try that? And they've done that. And they've gone in and they've spoken to their, their, their there are three whole supermarkets in my village. Okay. Um, and if you go into them, they won't offer you a plastic bag because kids wow. have gone in there and they've said, don't offer them to people. We don't want you to. And they're like, that's oh, great. Oh. So showing them that they can do it. Yeah, that's great. Small changes in one little city can, or little town, can yeah. make changes in other places. Okay, this is the third and final sketch note, and it was from Innovate as well, and it's from Catherine Bills, Catherine Billsborough and Kerry Jones's talk about eco literacy, and they were talking about how it's a buzzword, and it or it's just kind of become a popular word since maybe nineteen eighty. 
you know, it's kind of peaked around 2000 is um and what their aim is they are very heavily highly involved in ELT footprint or at ELT footprint and their plan was to take the kefir or CEFR um can do statements and kind of make green can do statements with the hashtag ELT can do eco and so the can do statements are statements that students can do from a ELT from a green perspective do you have examples of that off the top of your head or shall I move I mean, on? I, I really like the can identify greenwashing. That's one of my things I like to do with my, yeah, my students. Okay. I do spot the greenwashing because, you know, yes. it's so important. Right. It's a critical thinking is so vital. You know, we, we talk about it in, in almost everything. And I think that's a good one, you know, to go. It's a great game to play and it's a great way to get everything outside of the classroom. Because okay. I, I talk, you know, with English, with language learning, your best students are the ones who work outside the classroom as well, aren't they? They're the ones who watch TV in English. Um, yes. Your best karate students are the ones who don't just go to, you know, two hours a week. They also practice outside the classroom. This is the same with environmentalism. Um, you know, we don't, if we don't practice outside the classroom, then we'll forget it. And I've just seen that Vanessa hasn't bought a pair of jeans since then. So, yeah, good. Yeah, I think I only buy new pairs of jeans when they get holes in them. I haven't washed a pair of jeans since then, so you know they're, they're, <laughs> they're going to be walking by themselves soon. I think it's best to keep to yourself. Oh. <laughs> okay, so from that particular session, uh, Catherine Billsborough and Kerry Jones are world changers or change makers for many reasons, partly because they set up ELT Footprint, but also partly they inspired me to create this lesson plan, which is available on my website, emilybrysonelt.com forward slash freebies. And it's based around, partly inspired by, I teach students who are A0, very, very low level English, um, literacy learners, developing literacy and finding resources for them based around the environment. In fact, finding resources for them in general is quite a challenge. So a lot of it comes down to making your own. So I can understand and explain climate change. Obviously, I didn't actually tell the students that this can-do statement. The problem with can-do statements is often they have language that is more difficult than the um, level you're pitching at. But yeah. because it's visual, actually, this lesson, I've done this lesson with my intermediate learners and with my beginners, and I've had equally good results and I've used it in slightly different ways, adapted it. And, I, and also I can communicate different ways I can help the environment, so I can talk about different ways I can help the environment. So the slide is uh, basically a kind of hand-drawn infographic and show it to students. You can either print it for students, how they would say don't print it for students. You can get them to open it on their mobile phones or display it on the whiteboard. Um, we've got these whiteboards at the college that basically project um, onto the whiteboard and then students can use whiteboard markers to uh, come up and draw on them or add their text to them. So, or you could ask them to, you could display it and get them to add their inf um, ideas using post-it notes. So what I get, got them to do was got them to think about what does each item mean um, and use any language that they had to describe it. So for example, what would this one be? And you can write in the chat. Or what would this one be? Or actually, what's the difference between the things on the left and the things on the right? Oh, I'm just going to put the link to your to your page in there so people oh, can great, grab it. You. There you go. Neg yeah, negative water. versus positive. Yeah, yeah, like kind yeah. Of before the change and after the change, and yeah, water contamination, pollution. Yeah. Looking at those endangered animals, it reminded me of, of David Attenborough, obviously. Um, oh, really? Yeah, speaking about 90% you know, of mammal mass on Earth is now either humans or for human consumption. So 96% oh, wow. so of it. So it's, you know, basically humans, cows and, you know, livestock. So 4% and that's all the elephants, all the giraffes, like, all the bats. So that oh. kind of brought that to, to light um that's scary so yeah you could actually add in those kind of facts actually you could 
that's one of the beauties of this because I actually not only is it adaptable, it's I give it to you as a PowerPoint presentation so you can actually adapt it and make it your own. Because one of the things about teaching ESOL literacy learners for me or learners with um, low, le low levels as well is you want to make the lessons your own. So as much as I'd love to give people a PDF where it's all shiny and new, I think teachers are going to want to adapt it. So that's why I've done it as a PowerPoint. And yeah, you could actually add 95% of animals or you could add it, make it facts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, on the on the recycling one, while well, recycling, you know, is is generally a positive thing. We could, you know, you could talk about 9% of plastics has ever been recycled, you know. It's, okay. It's, Only it's 9%. great. Only 9% of plastics ever made has been recycled. Yeah. Wow. Okay, yeah. Have you got any other scary facts for us for any of these? Uh, um, possibly, uh, but <laughs> those are the ones that came to mind. Yeah, the, the idea of I think it's a, a football field worth of trees is cut down every minute, um, which is pretty yeah. scary. But yeah, and then the other issue is the new trees. I think there's a fact about one new tree takes about I don't know twenty or thirty years to um, take in the same amount of carbon dioxide. Uh, so yeah, I think it takes four trees for every established tree. So if you cut down an established tree, then you need to plant four trees to replace yeah. it, not one tree, because it takes that long for the trees to grow. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And giant redwoods sequester even more carbon dioxide than any tree in the world. So plant giant redwoods. Do it. And then at the end, there's more for redwoods. Emily to find. <laughs> yeah, I like cycling to them. Um, okay, so this is there are some ways that you can use it. Get students to write some facts. You could get them to ser search online for their own facts, in fact, um, um, to describe. Also, get them to look, or I like to use this as a great way of, of um, kind of looking at greenwashing in that or, or fake news and get them to invent some facts. Just invent uh -huh. the facts okay. and get other people to look and maybe they can find five real facts, five invented and get That's people to, to look for and be like, which ones do you think are real? Which ones do you think are fake? Why do you think it's real? Why do you think it's fake? So. Brilliant. Great. Nice. Um, okay, so this is what I give, what I give my students in terms of um, vocabulary because although, yeah, pollution... Students aren't really going to, my, my beginner students, that was going to be too difficult for them. So dirty rivers. The same here. And I do feel a bit bad about this because overpopulation obviously says it more, but at the same time, too many people, my students know this language. They're going to understand it. They're not going to understand overpopulation. And yes, I would like for it to say um, overpopulation rather than too many people, because too many people suggest that it's all the people that are having big families that are the problem, but it's not. And actually, there is a statistic, actually, that I think there's, is that for one person in an Ethiopian country, in, in Ethiopia, it's, it consumes the same amount, I think it takes, was it four, four, four people in Ethiopia for one person in the UK? Well, yeah, I, I remember that. Carbon. It might even be higher than that. Yeah, I remember seeing a, a statistic, and, and I'm not going to, I don't remember it exactly, but it was a horrifying statistic about the electricity used for the average fridge in the US was more than the, you know, the annual consumption of a family in Kenya. So wow. <laughs> something along those lines, they weren't the exact statistics, but it was about, you know. Yeah. So when we talk about too many people, yeah, overpopulation, which creates overconsumption. You know, we're not yeah. saying that that families in La big families in Latin America are the problem. Well, no, that, that's no. not the case. Yeah. It's the fact that so many people are using so much stuff. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, it's more more like overconsumption, really. But again, overconsumption that's not going to be easy to explain. And we could we had a little bit of a talk about this in very simple language about this particular thing as well. So yeah, some very simple language that you can use. But obviously, use the previous slide, get students to create their own uh, words, sentences, questions, facts, whatever. Um, OK, I can identify common household waste is the next can do statement. So this is looking at recycling. And so I drew lots of um, common waste. 
And the beauty of these doodles is that I can do them in class on whiteboard really quickly. A lot of them I can draw faster or about the same speed as I would for like one word or maybe two words. Maybe not this tin. This tin might take me a bit longer. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't do all the all the lines in it. But yeah, things like uh, this, mm, what do you call that? Console, computer pads, joypad. Controller. Pads. Is it a game it, controller? It is a controller. It's a um, controller. Okay. Yeah, it's and it's also it great. Do video games. When you do it, well, my, my daughter has a, a switch. So, but it's great that when you do it quickly, and, and what I loved when I see the things that you do, it you don't have to be artistic. I'm not saying you're no. an artistic, Emily. I'm not saying I'm not, artistic. I'm not an artist. But your students can look at it and be like, oh, hang on a minute. That is yeah. just a combination of these three shapes, and I can just put them together. Yeah. And I've, I've had students actually that have been in like, learning language for a long time, and they've said, you know, actually, you're, the doodles that you draw on the whiteboard, they really help me to understand more than anything else. And it's like, oh, that moment. Yes, there's a reason why I spent loads of time developing my visual vocabulary to learn these things. <laughs> yeah, like maybe four or five years ago, I didn't know how to draw things like this. Um, and yeah, now over time, I've learned them and they're part of my visual vocabulary. I can draw them all really quite quickly. And I can look at an icon and copy it quite quickly too. Oh. I think that idea of icons is, is super important now because we live in a world of emojis. Yes. You know, you, you don't, com when you communicate with someone, you can communicate almost entirely in emojis. So having this ability to, to, to put these emojis up on the board, these icons up there for students to see, it, it makes it really relative as well. Because, you know, none of these would look out of place in your, in your WhatsApp conversation. Yeah. And it's international iconography. Think if you think about going for a walk around an airport, a big bad airport, um, that's you're going to see a lot of icons that are international. Even if you look around the Zoom screen, you'll have the mute button. The, the stop video button is basically a square with a little triangle on it. The mute button's an oval with like a light with a kind of U shape, and then an yeah. upside down T. Yeah, if you start looking at all icons as shapes or bits of shapes, then it makes the drawings much simpler. And you can copy them quite easily with, um, if, you, if you're not sure how to draw something, firstly, you can do one of my courses, build your visual vocabulary, uh, or right. you can go to thenounproject.com or just search online for whatever it is you want to draw plus icon, and then you can copy it that way. Um, yeah, so what what it what so students have what is it? It is a tin, it is a bottle, it is an apple pizza core, it is a controller. Don't think I use controller. Um uh, they are bones, they are boxes, they are batteries, etc. And then we look at they are, it is, and then the plurals, for example. So look at that. You're teaching grammar and you're teaching sustainability at the same time. This is exactly. one of the big things that that people that, that there are complaints about, you know. I and have had failing and phonics. You can look at this exactly the silent e at the end of this letter. At the, yeah. the right word. Yeah, it's it, so like the the thing that the biggest complaint I ever hear is, "Oh, but you're teaching English. Like you're not teaching sustainability. So it's actually I'm teaching both. They're yes. both happening at the same time. If I want to have a grammar focused lesson, we can have a grammar focused lesson. Yeah. Yes. I don't do it often, but yeah, with low low levels that you know this, you know that the S and so on and so forth is very important to 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 get the the spelling of these things, the fundamentals of of grammar. Then yeah, absolutely, it's a wonderful way to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then there's this like little table with all the that you're very familiar with the spelling rules. Um, but it's it looks nice. It's it looks rules and pictures. I think it's fixing people's brains a bit more as well. And if they've got it in their notebooks, yeah, um, maybe stuck in with glue, then that's going to be much more visually appealing than than um just the, the text. Yeah, the traditional ones you get in the in the course books when it's just like, oh, I just want to sleep. Nobody learns from that. Need pictures. Put pictures yeah. there. I know what I really want to do is just sketch note lots and lots of grammar. Um <laughs> But it's having time. And oh, that that yeah. yeah. It's yeah, all right. I'm, I'm inventing a, a day with thirty hours, so it's all good. I'm fixing it. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Someone wants to commission me to do that. Perfect. 
Um, okay, so I can decide what household waste can be, can and can't be recycled, and we're going to do a little bit of a kind of um, activity here, and I consider different things to do with waste which I can't recycle. So, um, um, I'm gonna. I'm sure not entirely answers. sure if I stop sharing my screen if this is going to. Um, Hi everybody. <laughs> uh, share screen. Screen two. We're coming back here. It's the slide. It's coming. Don't worry. I'll tell you what I know. Oh, I, slideshow. I can... It's slideshow or slideshow, and I don't want okay. slideshow. I can feel Emily's pain right now. I also work on two screens and, and as Vanessa can attest to, as I um, I do storytelling with Vanessa and I'll be back on Saturday for storytelling, the wonderful snail and the whale. Everyone come along. It's going to be brilliant. Um, but I work on two screens as well. And sometimes I share the presentation screen and she's like, Harry, wrong screen, Harry. Uh, yeah, all the time, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could just unplug them. It's handy in some ways, but really... It's, it's great for started. working. It's really good for working, but then when you get into that moment, it can be really awkward. So yeah. But there we go. So this is. Can you see the? Can you recycle it? I can see. Can you recycle it? Can Excellent. you see? Can you recycle good. it? Good. Okay. So I'm gonna get the. Can I do this with the spotlight? I don't think I can. No, I can't. Uh, I need the select tool. Okay. So, can you recycle it? Can you recycle? And you can see in the chat. Oh, why is it not working? I think maybe because of oh, maybe when annotation tools. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Can go. I recycle the evil plastic bag? What do we think? If you can just say in the chat. Can jury's out. Can it be recycled? Depends on the kind of plastic bag, doesn't it? And it depends on the town and city and yeah. like there are some places that will let you, but generally, generally you shouldn't be putting your plastic bags in recycling, but some places you can. And mm -hmm. this is one of the big problems with when it comes to plastic recycling is a lot of places have very different rules and it can even be from, for example, my village to the next village you know they may be like the, the numbers you have on the plastics so they may be recycled number five here but in the next village they don't and in some yeah. places in the uk like soft plastics for example they're saying in a lot of supermarkets bring in your soft plastics we can recycle but you know so it could be depending where you are that's one of the big things yeah exactly so you can get a lot well, oops you can get a lot of discussion going with that around can you recycle, can you not recycle it? You can get them to research it, find out what it is in their area, find out which particular ones. Like, I think in some places, if you put a plastic bag in, it completely contaminates your entire bin, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's a total pest. Exactly. Okay. What about fish and bones and bio stuff? Can it be re recycled? Oh, let's have a look in the chat. Let's see what people are saying. Oh, yes and no depends on, I love that answer from yeah, uh, yeah. Laura Louise, yes and no depends. Yeah. It can in Hull, goes for compost goods. We had food waste recycling here in Glasgow and then they took it away. Um, where I used to live, in, in the posh part of the city, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> when I was renting, uh, we had organic bins there. Now... I live more in the countryside. We have to compost our own stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So then it's a choice of, you know, if it's cooked food, do we put no, don't we put that there? That goes in this bin and then this one goes in this bin. So yes, yeah, it's all a bit of fun and juggling, but it's a, it is a, a really good like learning journey, learning how to do all these different things and where they go. And, and you can really see in your own waste. Uh, that sounds wrong. Um, <laughs> You can All see the it things that can be recycled. Exactly. Like it's it's annoying because you have to get new bins and separate things. But I've noticed now, like particularly since the pandemic, the amount of times I take my bin out has gone down. It used to be almost every day, but now it's maybe 
once a week we take the bins out you know that yes there are recycling bins but we hardly use plastics now and and just being conscious of what you're doing with your recycling you can really reduce your own waste you just stop and think you know you're in the supermarket and you think do I really want that punnet of blueberries which look delicious somehow cost seven euros um so well I don't want to sell my kidney for a start or could I maybe have some bananas that aren't wrapped in plastic instead you know so it's it really helps you stop and think yeah okay that's impressive that you've managed to get your recycling down oh we've got a picture from Vanessa amazing she, I, I just I got it. that. I just got that on WhatsApp, and it may oh, that cool. you may have noticed the big smile appear on my face as soon as Amazing. I got it. It's so good. It is it's so brilliant. good. I need to find a way to. I'm going to try and. Is it okay to display it, Vanessa? During this session, I'm going to try and download it and display it. If you if if you're okay with that, if you prefer not to, that she's okay with it. She's yeah. okay with it. Yay, she's wonderful. Great. Okay. She's wonderful. There's a picture. There's there's a picture very much of what she is to me coming up soon. Okay, that's good because I was about to just go back to the answers. Um, Let's go to the answers. That, Let's so do it. we can do the screen sharing conundrums. Can you see it? Can you see Vanessa's sketch note? Yeah, Let's there it screen. is. Yeah, it's amazing. So what she put? Yeah. Oh, she put well, birthday uh, boy. The, oh, the love that. and the passion. Great. Oh, I like the pictures. Is this your birthday today? Oh, uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, happy birthday tomorrow. Thank you very much. And is the, the crown like the king of green ELT? Or the crown because it's your birthday? Or both? Maybe both. Maybe both. Maybe both. And it could be related to storytelling as well. Yeah. I do love storytelling. Plastic bags, no thank you, exactly. Green graphics, useful poster. That's it, search online, invent facts. Love all of this. Yeah. Please keep these coming. Please keep sketch noting the rest of the session. That is amazing. That is Brilliant. so good. Really good. Uh, if I were wearing socks, they would have been knocked off by now. Um, I am not wearing socks, however. <laughs> So let's have a look at these answers. What okay, do we think? So the answers are on a different slide. There we go. There are the answers. But obviously, they're probably mostly open to discussion as well, because you want to get the discussion going, because that's the whole point in teaching English, isn't it? Exactly. But you can get things like should, could, might, maybe. Yeah. Depends on the area. Yeah. It's no depends. Um, yeah, so these are the answers. And then, yeah, when you look at the clothes, you can make suggestions of what you can do before yeah. you try and recycle them. Like, when I rip this, because it will rip eventually, it'll be cut up and it'll be a cleaning rag, so. Uh, actually, yeah, one of my, when I did a storytelling class, Susan Piper attended, um, and she does a lot of work with the Hands Up Project, but she did this wonderful story about a uh, red jacket, and then the red jacket gets repurposed into, I don't know, a cushion or a skirt. And then the skirt turns into a cushion and then the cushion becomes, it, it gets, keeps getting repurposed and like, so it just ends up being a hanky in the end or something. It's beautiful. I'm really not even joking. I mm? was talking to my wife today about a potential like photo or video project of exactly that. Really? Yeah. But I thought of making like just, you, again, you know, in Schindler's List, you see the red jacket. Yeah. yeah. Having everything else like, blacked out around it and just having this color of of like a jacket that then goes on to maybe another person and then becomes repurposed so yeah Susan Piper is obviously a genius she is a genius and yeah her do drawings were amazing I'll, I'll ask her if, I'll ask her if we can share them with the world That'd be cool. I'd love to see yeah, it would be uh it is okay now is when you get to use the annotation tools in zoom uh, I often find that people don't know how to do this uh, some people. So if you see this little green bar that says you are viewing Emily Bryson's screen, go down to annotate. And then this bar should hopefully pop up. And you want to focus on the text one so you can write, the stamp so you can make text, and then this drawing one if you want to draw. And I know that it's really hard to draw with a mouse. I am also 
I'm not so confident with drawing with the mouse, but if you have a go, I will love that. Harry will also love that. Um, so yeah, you're viewing Emily Bryson's screen and then annotate. And then if you could just write something here now, then I will know that you've understood, you've got it. Oh, Emily is cool. Thanks, Harry. Great. <laughs> Where are the other participants? Are they writing anything? Hello. Excellent. There you go. Don't forget to press enter, by the way. That was the thing that, that you, you may not realise, like to actually, once you've written it, you'll see it. Make sure that you, you click outside of it. There you go. Someone's drawn oh, a wonderful this is place, beautiful. Julie. Love it. Great. OK, I'm going to move on to the next slide. So basically, you are viewing a slide, annotate, and then draw something or whatever. OK. So good, everybody's got it. Um, and this is, so this is what, um, I did this in class to get my students to think about environmental vocabulary. It's called a container and it's quite a common tool in graphic facilitation, basically drawing an icon really big and getting to people to, to put information into it. So I quite like to do it for like vocabulary brainstorming or write everything you know about or Yesterday, we were doing a writing text about the senses. So I drew um, an eye, a nose, a mouth, etc., and then got them to think about this memory where they each of the senses, so something about each of the senses. So here, I'd like you to add all your environmental vocabulary using the annotation tools, any words that you know about the environment, anything at all. Can be an easy word or a difficult word. Ooh, bring the fossil industry to its knees, or entire phrases, in fact. You know, I just it could, it could be, it could be. That's the beauty of a visual template. Actually, you can use it for so many things. So you can use it for. I was thinking for vocabulary, but actually, you could use it for again facts or dreams about the future. What do you want the green your green future to look like? Okay, greenwashing, regenerative. Renewable energy, lovely, sea levels rising. Yeah, you could use it for worries, things that you're worried about in terms of um, the environment. Yeah, that's why I love visual templates so much because not only are they zero preparation, you can use them in so many ways and reuse them in so many ways. Yeah, green it's a, a great way you can you can do this. You can then get your screenshot of it, and then you can revisit mm. you know, later on and see how your opinions have changed, how your ideas have changed, and it's very it's visual. So, yeah, I quite like doing that in a lot of my uh, teacher training sessions. Actually, is um, use a visual template of some description to see maybe how confident are you at the beginning of the session, and then I'll do it again at the end, and I'll show them at the beginning, and usually they've moved up in some way, whether it's a staircase or a hot air balloon yeah. a bit I like think. Rachel Soteria's idea of the the suitcase you know what do you have when you're going in there and what you have when you're you're leaving the oh, session so at the nice. start on the end that's a, a great blog to to check out ah, yes she does the have a lot of cool things on her blog yeah right great thanks so much for adding all your ideas I Lovely did stuff. add you myself I'm, a, I'm really upset that I've lost the photo of my student work but can't have everything. Okay, so get your tools. That are, these are called visual templates. So the last one was containers and the visual templates. You'll notice these are basically flip charts. And you'll notice that I've added some little fake sellotape. Obviously, it's paper tape, not plastic tape. Of course, uh, of course. And, uh, nice aluminium drawing pins in the corners here or just little spots to make it look like they've been tacked on. And you can use these in many ways. You can have them displayed around your classroom and the students go and interact with them using post-it notes, or you can do a paper carousel. So you take a big sheet of paper like this, you add some sort of guidance on it, some visual guidance on it, and then you put it on the table and students add their ideas. And then you pass the piece of paper to the next table or the students walk to the next table and they add their information. So for example, with energy sources, and again, you can use it in lots of different ways. So with energy sources, it could be find a fact about 
uh, power stations or nuclear power uh, about oh sorry nuclear power about coal power about wind energy about solar about waves about biomass and it could be again find a fact it could be um write some words about write a sentence about ask a question about and then students have to go and find the answers to their questions uh, things like reducing plastic waste um, students can add their ideas for reducing plastic waste or the problems with plastic waste and ways to save electricity lots of different ways to save electricity for example so any other further ideas Harry, I'm sure. Uh, well, I was going to say also like ways to to save water is another great one you can do there. Um, because there are so many things that uh, my my daughter's yesterday was World Water Day, not World Waters Day. You know, it was World uh, Water Day. That's tomorrow. Yeah, hey, there you go. Um, and yesterday at the school they were talking about um saving water. Um, mm -hmm. obviously they're nine years old. So it's turn off the tap or, you know, have a shower when you're rather than having a bath. All good ideas. You know, my daughter may have been brainwashed a bit since she was three. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, she mentioned that, you know, maybe you should you should eat less meat because meat uses a phenomenal amount of water and drink less milk, you know. And it was just this sudden realisation that, that it's not something that had ever occurred to the other students. So... And it doesn't occur to a lot of people. You know, I, I did a, a session in Turkey the other day and we would, I did one of my favorite games of higher or lower. You have to guess how many liters of water there are used to, to get a liter of cow milk. It's 628 liters, but they, they started out with um, like seven. And it's like, yeah, not exactly. So one liter. Yeah. So, so things like that, it's great. This reduced plastic use is wonderful as well because the first step is always, you know, buy less plastic and, and and this, that and the other. But, you know, then there's other different ideas that can come in and, and other ways of, of not using it. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, what I should have done there, actually, I've got people to add their ideas here. Yeah, they could have done that while I was blathering. On, yeah, <laughs> but I feel like maybe we should move on. Do you want to do that? Shall we do that or move on? Oh, let's move yeah. on to the next one. I think I think they get yeah. the, the gist. Here, exactly. There you go. There's a picture of Vanessa. <laughs> yeah, she's a marigold. In fact, everybody that's here today is a marigold. Um, do you want to say what marigolds are? Because actually, I found out about marigolds by listening to Harry Waters talk with, no, podcast. The drive home was it with Bavna? It was. Sister? Yeah, it was. And she is an amazing human. Actually, she reads a story on Readable called the uh, Segreded Reader on the Readable app, and the Readable app is amazing. I love it. Um, I listen to it myself. <laughs> but she's got. Um, I know it's for graded for graded readers for free. Um, and yeah, she reads a lovely story about the selfish giant. And it's yeah, she's got yeah, she's amazing. Um. And yeah, yeah. We, you were also on that show, um, yes, as so was Vanessa. Um, ah, so cool. I need to watch Vanessa's one. Amazing. Yeah, all about mindfulness. Um, she literally taught me everything I know about mindfulness, which is wow. more, more and more every day. So um, marigolds are a flower, um, but they are a flower that when you plant them in your garden, they help everything around. There you go. They're plants to help other plants grow. There you exactly. go. Debbie, Companion thank you very plants. much. They are. There you go. So... They, they help everyone around them and you know the, the people that that we know in life the people that people like Emily Vanessa everybody here who you know help each other out and you know really help each other grow uh, yeah. and I think these are these and I agree with Emily's point completely that these are fundamental to to helping change makers you know to because no one can do it on their own nobody can yeah. You know, Greta doesn't do all that on her own, by the way. Number one, she had a, her, her mum was a Eurovision Song Contest singer and her dad was an actor, I think. Like, it, she didn't come from nothing. She had a huge support system. Um, and you need that. You need your marigolds around you to help you grow and to help you, you know, make a difference in the world. Yeah. And so actually what I did, so this is another visual template that I've used in many ways. So I used it in a teacher training session the other day about how to, create a classroom environment that was um, that supported learning and for students to support each other. But I thought it would be quite nice now for people to add their ideas of how to 
create a supportive environment for change makers. So how do we make our classroom, how do we support our students to become change makers? If you can add that using your annotation tools, that would be lovely. Yes, celebrate sustainable behaviours. I'm going to put praise them and role model. Encourage students to question you. I think Always. it's I think, yeah, I think it's a really important thing that we kind of, you know, as teachers, we obviously know everything. Of course we do. Um, but it's really important to let our students know that they have every right to question us. We want to to build questioning students, students who, you know, maybe we don't maybe we don't know everything um, and yeah. ask, you know, what, it doesn't have to be to do with the planet or whatever. It can just be to do with, with, with life in general, you know, um, question, you know, why are we studying the second conditional teacher? You know, let them have yeah. that voice, let them have that ability to, to, to stand up. And, and I think the most important thing, like as teachers that we can do, the absolutely most important thing that we can do is to listen. Yeah to to all of our students is one of the things I love talking about when I talk about primary students especially when they're in first second grade when they come in and they've got a loose tooth oh practice gratitude brilliant one brilliant one when students come in with a loose tooth and they're like teacher look my tooth is going to fall out and the natural reaction as an adult is hey whatever you know if my tooth falls out no tooth fairy comes to me I've got to go and give money to the dentist um but just listening and being excited by that, or maybe next week it's their cousins, dogs, brothers, owners, birthday party that they're going to get to go to. Just listen to them and be excited by that and show them that what they're saying matters. And then yeah. again, be grateful for them being in the class and, and help them learn how to practice gratitude. Yeah. Yeah, I've, got, I've learned so much from my students about the world over the years. They're amazing humans. Um, okay, so um, this is a lesson that I did. Has anybody seen the Mumbai beach cleanup before and after? If you haven't, please Google it. Uh, please, please search for it online. Um, sadly, I can't show any pictures because I was going out on YouTube. Um, so I think for copyright purposes, I don't know if I'll be able to do that. But um, if you have a look online for Mumbai Beach Cleanup, I highly recommend it. Basically, um, this is Afro Shah, who is a change maker. He's an amazing human being. The beach before looked a bit like this. It was absolutely covered in uh, rubbish. I think it was at some places a metre and a half deep in rubbish, in fact. Um, and then Afro Shah just decided to start picking up a handful one day. And then from there, he got the entire community involved. And then big lorries involved. And now the beach looks like this and actually has turtles involved and tourism. And yeah, what a difference. Yeah, I'll put a link to the, the there's there's a CNN article oh, there. But of, Thank of you course, you know, you can you can find whichever article you, you fancy reading. Um brilliant. But yeah, there's there's all sorts in there. That, I just just avoid the Daily Mail one, which comes up quite quite high <laughs> on there. Whatever yeah. you do, don't click on the Daily Mail. <laughs> good, good, good life advice. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. So this is a it's part of a lesson where you listen to a story about people making positive changes in the local area, and then the students interact with an infographic in various ways by reading different facts, and it's all part of uh, the Voices series. And actually, the Voices series it's got Dan Barber. Uh, it, Dan Barber was one of the authors and. He is well renowned for being part of ELT Footprint, though there are a lot of um, green themed lessons in there, along with all the other amazing content, such as giving students a global voice, the diversity of different Englishes, um, what else, uh, international communication skills, plus all the other things that you get with course books, reading, writing, speaking, listening, etc. Check it out. Dan and, and Chia have both been on Teacher Talk Radio as well. So. Oh, have they? I, was I, they didn't, I don't think I've ever listened to Dan's one. I should. He was on with uh, another person at the same time. Um, and we talked all about, it was around COP, the one that was in Glasgow, 26. So. Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah. 
Actually, so. the lesson at the very beginning with the little drawings, that was also inspired by COP26 because it was in Glasgow. So obviously you've got to do something. There you go. Um, okay, this brings me on to sustainable development goals. And I realise that we still haven't drawn. Have you got time to hire around, Harry? Go on then. I, I reckon I have. I don't see why not. I'm just okay. looking for my pencil now. Oh, here okay. it is. If anybody you... else has to shoot off because it's been over an hour. Um, I usually so keep free. my pencil in my beard. But <laughs> we are having fun, so we're going to stay. Um, so sustainable development goals. I think Harry will talk about these much better than me. They're basically UN yeah. goals, but yeah, you can explain it much Yeah, the, the sustainable more. development goals were part of the 2015 agenda, which was signed in Paris. Um, I love as a teacher, these are wonderful. As a teacher, these are incredible. These are one of the best tools you can have to help your students become global citizens, to learn about different ideas in the world, to learn about the interconnectivity of you know the planet with poverty, with hunger. Um, these are a wonderful tool. There's loads of information you can get from them. There's loads of things that you can use. In fact, there's a whole series of renewable English series too, all about using the SDGs. On a global scale, are they governmental greenwashing? Well, maybe they are because, you know, we're eight years into it and how far along have we actually come? I don't know. But as teachers, these are such an incredible tool um, and I love using them in my classes. I, I, there isn't a class that goes by that I don't use these in my class. Oh. And you also created a lot of materials from Macmillan as well, didn't you? Indeed, indeed. And I'm, I'm currently creating more. Um, okay. and, and we are... They they are sorry. Um, I, I'm the I, I'm helping with the the new site, which is changemakersworld.live. I just dropped it in the the chat there, although I didn't oh, cool. drop the actual URL in. Um, but changemakersworld.live. It's all about students from around the world sharing what they've done. So it can be that maybe they drew posters of the SDGs. It doesn't have to be a really complex thing oh Vanessa's leaving thank you for coming along Vanessa I'll see you on Saturday yeah. my dear you're an please watch the superstar. recording to get the doodle part if you can exactly um see you later my dear thank you so much yeah um, thanks for the amazing sketch note yeah the the so using these ideas and sharing them on this changemakersworld.live and it doesn't have to be huge projects just little things so that's what I'm working on at the moment yeah anyway. great and I've also created some sustainable development goal themed lessons with Dan Barber, in fact, for voices. There are supplementary materials there. I think 12 projects, one, two for each level, so it'd be 14 projects um, uh, based around the sustainable development goals and things like, for example, getting the students to go out litter picking, a uh, sustainable food event, mapping the weather and the temperature, stuff like that. Uh, how cities have changed over time, upcycling um, things, uh, secondhand clothes swapping, lots of different cool projects that you can do over time. With these are all in my chats. They're Is all it? in there because they're so they're such they're such simple ideas that can be so easily executed, and they're, and they're brilliant. They're brilliant. So yeah, cool. Okay, so let's draw them. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing and then change over to my visualizer. Uh, and I'm going to pin myself. Please remind me to unpin myself. Don't oh, forget to blurry? unpin yourself. Well, it's a bit blurry, yeah. What's really happened? blurry. Yeah. Oh, well, there we go. it's also upside down. It's right. upside down, but there we go. I could see your hand at least. Here we go. Uh, okay, I don't know why that's so blurry. That's weird. It's not usually like that. Where have I put my pencil again? There we go. Maybe if I turn this light off. Or... I, I think I can. I think we'll be able to see it though. Okay. Also, yeah, the light's not great because it's night time. Because it's getting dark. Yeah. So I do apologize. I can okay. see a beautiful sunset out my window, just oh, falling over the city. Again. Not how it is here in Scotland. Okay. So um so the first sustainable development goal is no poverty. And it's basically a whole lot of people holding hands. And people, I quite like to draw people just as circles or sometimes as kind of N shapes with a wee line because they're quite, quite, they're more gender neutral that way. And it's a step up from a stick person. And I think stick people can get a bit um, confused or 
uh, detract a little bit from letters. Oh, and, and they, they always get the them. they always get the triangle dresses, don't they? Like, yeah. Oh, well, this is a girl, so it has a triangle yeah, dress. This. All girls wear dresses all the time. Obviously, and girls also all have long hair. Obviously, of course they do. Yeah, just like me. Um. So yeah, that can be the no poverty one. Then uh, yeah, find if you make people all kind of the same, then it can be a little bit more equal. But I added a bit of hair just to show you that it can be quite a simple way to do that. It's um, mine. Yeah, zero hunger is basically a line, and then a U shape, and then some little S's for um, to show the steam coming off the bowl. And then good health and well-being is basically a line and then a zigzag. And then a little heart. And what I really love about these is they're very obviously what they are. You know, yeah. it's very clear what they are. They're, they're not exact copies of the pictures, no. but it's very clear to me what each one of these is. Um, yeah, and, and it's all about even I can do it. Point. It's not art, it's communication. It's not about yeah, you making your whiteboard or your um, lessons just a little bit more supportive by adding um, adding some extra visuals right there and then. Um, when it comes to the, the quality education one, so draw, basically draw a book, which is kind of like, do you remember drawing seagulls when you were a child? Or birds? Oh, yeah. And then a line. And then another seagull underneath. And then another line above. And then you've got a book. And then the pen is a rectangle and a triangle. Uh, and gender equality is a circle with a cross. Oh, I went, I did the arrow first. Oh, you can draw the arrow first. That's fine. Oh, feels like. I can never remember which one's which. This is why I don't use it for gender. Uh, uh, yeah. Can you remember which one's which? I, uh, remember. I, I did a pronouns video recently on social media. And one of the reasons I never use this is because I can never, ever remember. Is that the male? Is that the female? I think, I think the arrow is. I think I'm going to sound silly if I get this wrong now. I think the arrow is the man and the plus yeah, is the Yeah, that was my gut feeling as well, actually. Thanks, Marianne, for, for being here. Absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you. I'm heading off. Uh, and then clean water is basically, uh, well, it's a cup. It's a cup. Um, with an arrow. With an arrow underneath it. So yeah, a lot of the, when it comes to graphic facilitation, a lot of it's about drawing icons and copying international iconography. So these are actually perfect because they are international icons for sustainable development goals. There we go. Yeah. Um, affordable and clean energy is a sun. And for drawing a sun, I quite often, I prefer to do the top and the bottom and the left and the right first. And oh, then and then fill it in. And then... Yeah, just makes it a bit more even. That's a good idea. And then here there's a kind of on-off switch, which is a circle with a line at the top. Ah, uh, yeah. And the then, next one, I the next one I absolutely disagree with. I, I have oh, really? very strong dislike of this. I don't see how we can be sustainable if we're looking for decent work. Great. But economic growth, really, we can't have economic growth and be sustainable at the same time. It's, it doesn't work um, unless we're growing greenly, which we mm. are not enough anyway. So, but yeah, that's just my own personal opinion. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean you shouldn't draw it. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know how economic growth can go hand in hand with um, with being sustainable because economic growth means you need to use more and more and more stuff. Yeah. So. Okay, this is quite a hard one to draw. I'm struggling a bit this, here. I this not this makes this. me feel like I'm trying to draw Harry Potter. Yeah, I've not got that one quite right at all. But it's about getting the point across. It's exactly. not about being perfect. There I've practised a lot and I still am not perfect. So There's mine. Mine's not perfect, but you know what? It's, 
Does it get the point perfect. across? Exactly. Then it you're winning it. Probably with. just about does. Yeah. There you go. The thing with developing your visual vocabulary is practice. And, yeah. yeah. And yeah, this industry innovation and infrastructure one, that's this one's gonna be interesting. This one looks really hard. Um, <laughs> I'm not I'm not even I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this one to the expert. Okay, so I would start with a line in the middle. Yeah. And then draw a um kind of very open V shape. Mm -hmm. And then make sure that the two lines here and here are equal. And the two lines here and here. Or well, parallel more than equal, and then draw halfway down, and another halfway down, and then make sure this line is parallel with this, and this line is parallel with this, and then another kind of an upside down V shape, and then you're wanting another line here. To make sure it's parallel and another parallel line here, but also making sure there's a kind of X in the middle. Well, it looks like a man. Oh, it does it look like a man like, with a box like on his head. Yeah. yeah, and then you can draw the lines here, and then this line and this line have to be the same, and this line and this line the same, and then you can go down and across. And it doesn't need, to, again, doesn't really need to be perfect. Mine is not perfect. So if anyone wants to... Oh, and mine is also not perfect. Mine's if anyone wants to share theirs, there you go. Ooh. Yeah. I, a competition I didn't make sure my lines are parallel. Yeah. Any mathematicians or techie drawers in there? Um, yeah, reduced inequality. So it's got like an... Uh, uh, equal sign in the middle and then a couple of triangles either side this one's nice and easy yeah you think this one's easy i think this one's quite hard it's all I the think... mathematical ones i don't have a mathematical brain uh, i think it's just i think it's simple because i don't know there's the other one there's so much more depth in it <laughs> and when it comes yeah. to finding depth uh, I struggle, but I think maybe the next one could be tricky. But again, it's no. I thought we were making it simple. Oh yeah. This one is just two lines. Yeah. And then a triangle on top. Oh, nice. And then just a line here. There you go. And then high rise flats are really easy. They're just a rectangle, and then little Some lines. Squares. Yeah. And then you can also draw. The next one you can also for windows you can put l shapes that's another way to quickly draw buildings or just do it's all about just giving the kind of idea of it yeah uh, and then Sideways figure of eight, which is basically an infinity sign. Exactly. And then a little arrow. Um, I put my arrow in the wrong place, but... I uh, don't think it matters, though, does it? Exactly. Just turn it upside down. The next one's an, an earth eye, I like to call this one. Oh, eye on the earth. Is that what it is? Um, so, yeah, a little circle in the middle. And then you'll be glad to know that the world does not need to look like the world. It doesn't need it to be absolutely does not. Uh, perfect. So just some wiggles at the top for the poles and then some little splodges in the middle for the land. Uh, and the fish. Um, Two, I don't know what you would call those two curves, I suppose. Yeah. In the middle. Oh, it reminds me of when we were in, uh, in Belfast. Yeah. Alethea just came to say hello. She's back from karate. From the Big Fish of Belfast. And the little story that I drew, which is on That's Instagram me. still. And possibly still on YouTube, actually, Big Fish of Belfast. Yeah. You can search for it. Are you, are you listening to Emily? Yeah. Oh, go. is that Ali? 
it is she's back hello Hi. thank you for teaching me you've okay you've reminded me about the spiral thing so I digress and draw the spirals thank you for teaching me Ali this new technique so I used to teach spirals uh, a notebook how to draw a notebook a rectangle three lines and then I would put little c-shapes along the side but then there Ali taught me a much better way this is what you taught her huh? Which is still the three lines and there then some spirals in the middle along the side. There you go. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming along, Ali. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I love you too. Uh, okay, uh, trees. Like that. And some little birds. Oh, the birds, there you go, back again with the, yeah. the, the M's, love them. Back to childhood. Yeah. Yeah, loads of people draw in their childhood and then stop drawing. I did. And I'm glad I started again. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm really, like, happy that, you know, I stopped probably at about Ali's age when I realised I wasn't fantastic at drawing. So, okay. <laughs> mostly from teachers saying, what is this? Uh, <laughs> they say, it's you, teacher. Um <laughs> So yeah, from there I, yeah, I kind of stopped. But she just gets better and better every day. It's amazing to watch. Yeah, she's great. Okay, so yeah, two lines for the, the gable. Yep. The judges thing. Yep. And I'll just tie it together like that. Actually, one of the easier ways to draw birds is just to do this but I don't oh, know yeah. it look quite so much like a sustainable development goal bird does no, it no but it looks like a bird still yeah and then these circles these are going to be a nightmare these are really hard I just tried doing it and then I realized I, I it didn't look great yeah it's really yeah because they're so like symmetrical yeah it's really hard I tried to, to sketch note somebody's talk recently I think it was Jason Anderson's talk at the International House World Comp and it was just terrible I had to draw it a million times much easier to do on digital when they fix your O's for there you there you go yeah so excellent and look at that and that was what Six minutes to draw 17 images. Like oh, maybe, maybe a few. Well, I'm not sure. So maybe it was maybe it was eight minutes. It wasn't a long time though. And uh and there was certainly uh chatting in between. So these you yeah. know, this idea, they're so simple to do, um, to work with just these simple shapes like this, that even I can do it. And I am oh, cool. I'm the, just gonna pin you for a second. Can I I am the least oh don't forget to unpin yourself. Uh, I know. Okay, I'm replacing the, the pin with so you're now you're now pinned so that I can see your drawings. Okay, um, here we go. There's mine. Hang on, you've got. Oh wow, they're amazing. I mean, that one needs work, but the others. Yeah, I'm not, that one's I'm hard not, though. They're I'm all not hard. not proud of the others. You know, I'm pretty happy with the other ones. I'm looking yeah, forward to showing my, my wife and daughter afterwards. Yeah. So thank you. Lovely for that. Thank you for inspiring me to draw them. Okay, we can quiz through the rest and then we're done. Um, so am I sharing the right screen again? The you are, level? yes. We are, we're back. Cool, we're back. Um, so this is uh, from the Voices Projects that I was telling you about. This is one of my activities. So students go on a litter pick and before the litter pick and after the litter, well, they create a graphic organizer in the process and they can do this like in a big sheet of paper in the classroom by drawing it out or if you've got a spare whiteboard you could do it on that um, or you could just uh, give it to the students and get give them individual ones and they basically reflect on how they felt about it before how they felt during and how they felt after um, and maybe a before photo and an after photo like for example afro shaz um photo in, of mumbai beach yeah yeah and in the future, I will. So any thoughts about how they felt about it in the future? So lots of really cool projects uh, from Voices Project. Lovely ideas. I'm definitely yeah. going to be stealing that one. I yeah. mean, using that one. Yeah, using it, obviously. Um, 
Okay, uh, I mentioned a little bit about redwoods. I get students out and about, uh, cycle to different redwoods. They sequester a lot of carbon. They do. They do. Um, and I, lo I love climbing trees. I mean, redwoods, not as easy, obviously. I can't quite wrap my arms around it, but, you know, I love going out and climbing a good tree. Yeah. And some people sleep in these trees in America. I read a book about a guy that sleeps in them. And there's, like, berry bushes at the top of them and stuff. They're quite incredible. Um, for IATFL, IATFL, as we record this, is three weeks away, four weeks away. Uh, I will be cycling there, 250 miles from Harrogate partly to save on carbon, but also partly to raise money for the Hands Up Project, because the Hands Up Project uh, does some amazing work with uh, children in need and children in Palestine. Uh, basically, yeah, they do lots of remote theater, lots of storytelling. They've got lots of really cool activities that they do. And actually on the Saturday after IATFL, um, they have a conference. So if anybody wants to stay around for that, and get a nice Palestinian meal, they can. Um, my Just Giving link is huge, so I'm not using that. If you want to donate and if you want to find out more about the Hands Up Project conference, uh, go to emilybrysonelt.com. I've put it on my homepage for the next few weeks because last time Just Giving link was massive and had really bad search engine and what to my yeah. <laughs> So, um, if you want any freebies, you can get the one about uh, the environment, hashtag ELT can do eco. I've also got an active meditation. I'm terrible at sitting still. I'm not great at uh, not thinking either. So an active meditation is basically a drawing meditation. Um, you can download that. Some literacy materials for adult ESL phonics, where I draw out a little story uh, using sounds. Uh, I've got a guide to graphic facilitation for English language teachers. And I've got a sketch noting guide, which is new. And very soon I will be releasing a course on sketch noting. I do have a Ooh. course already on graphic facilitation, both available on my website. I uh, love your, your spiral. Time. Yeah, the spiral, isn't it great? There it is. So good. Inspired by Ali. And yeah, if you, these are my current courses. Uh, the sketch noting one's not quite out, but it will be hopefully by the time lots of people watch this. Uh, builds your visual vocabulary. So if you want to learn how to draw some simple doodles specifically for English language teachers, you can. And introduction to graphic facilitation for English language teachers. Um, if you want to learn like visual templates, graphic organizers, GIFs, etc. This one's for music and doodling, and this one's graphic work. And Harry also has an amazing course, which I've wanted to do for a long time. Yeah, well, yeah. And then, of course, there's Series 3 coming out of, of Change Makers as well. I do have a course, but finding the time to start the next cohort is the big problem. At the moment, yeah. it's, I'm doing it in, like, in institutions because finding the open cohort moment is the tricky one. So uh -huh. but we do have Series 3 coming out of Renewable English, which is completely free. Um, free live lessons. You can also get one and two over on renewableenglish.com. You may or may not recognize that person doing karate. Uh, the famous Ali. There she is. Um, so yeah, do come along. There, there will be there will be twice monthly lessons starting on the 21st of April. I will not be at Aya Temple. Oh, I'm sad about that. I enjoyed her catch up and her vegan wrap last oh, year. Oh, it was good. It was at good. The big fish. Yeah. Probably a highlight. But it was a highlight. Yeah, yeah. I, know, everybody, I, I, think. I found the photo actually this morning. I was going to put it on here, but I didn't. Yeah. True story. <laughs> okay. And there we go. Yeah. Thanks go, for coming, everybody. And for go to these around, places. Even though we went over time, although we didn't actually say how long we were going to be. <laughs> we didn't. So, you no. know, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. But yeah, enjoying ourselves too much. Exactly that. Um, thank you so much for having me, Emily. Thank you for, for helping and encouraging me with my doodling. Um, I hope to doodle more, more now than ever. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for, for inviting me on. Good. Thank you so much for all your amazing ideas and for being so encouraging about my very first sketch note as well. Yeah. And, but I think most importantly, I think we both need to thank everybody who's come along. Um, exactly. Everyone for joining in. Thank you so much, everybody. But I'll, I'll I'll, I'll allow you to do that as you're the host. Yeah, thanks so much for coming, everybody. You're all amazing. Um, 
yeah, if, if you're watching this um, on the recording, please leave any comments in the YouTube uh, chat box or wherever. Uh, me and Harry will both be around at various points to pick them up. And if you've got any questions, uh, you can get in touch with us via any of these sociable sh socials. We're on far too many of each. All of the socials. <laughs> yes. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you Thanks so everyone. much.